Good afternoon, this is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History. We're gonna begin episode two of the Cold War and how it affected the folks in New England. Now, going to this slide here, this is on the uh, Avon Simsbury, Connecticut Nike site. And they had the, uh, the first missiles there with the Nike Ajax missiles. This picture was taken in uh, 1960. And of course, they were switched over from regular army to National Guard. The states got control, but they uh, operated it uh, strictly uh, like the U.S. Army. You can see that there they are uh, <laughs> cleaning and waxing the floors, and you can see all the, uh, the beds there, whatever. If they had a, uh, a long training exercise, they could not go home. They'd have to stay there overnight. Um, all to get ready because of the, uh, the Cold War situation. And here they are just uh, cleaning up the kitchen. They got a full kitchen because you've got uh, close to 100 people there um, on all, all three shifts to man this uh, Nike Ajax system. And this is a good picture. Um, my father's in this picture. He's uh, the tall fellow there, second from the right. And that's a Nike Ajax missile. And this picture actually was in the uh, Hartford Current back in the day, probably 1960, 61. And it's really interesting. That's the first uh, surface-to-air missile, the Nike Ajax. And that was the first one that they had in all these Nike sites. And their specifications of speed is Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, range 30 miles, flight ceiling 13 miles. And I like this uh, poster here, Up to the Minutemen, Defending America. They were called the Minutemen. And the reason we do that, because they were the National Guard, they all lived within probably 35 minutes of the site. And when they all got called to duty or whatever, that's, they would take maybe a half an hour or so, 45 minutes to get there and man the station. Um, so it's the actual modern day Minutemen. And here's a Nike Ajax missile. You can see the propellant on the lower bl black part of the missile. And there's the actual uh, diagram that shows the uh, rudder, elevator control section, uh, guidance section, all broken down here. It was quite, uh, quite a missile. And once again, it's only, um, it can only take down uh, one plane at a time, one jet at a time, that's it. Now, just reviewing again, what are these targets that the Soviet Union wanted in New England? Of course, right in the top in the middle, General Dynamics, electric boat in Groton, Connecticut. Bottom in the left, uh, General Dynamics, electric boat in Quonset Point, Rhode Island. Pratt & Whitney, East Hartford, Connecticut. Raytheon, Lexington, Massachusetts, and the newest Navy submarine base, New London, Connecticut. Those are the targets. And they still would be tar those targets today. Now, they would have what they call a uh, different alerts. We'll go down here, Nike site, um, hot battery alerts. Uh, number one, if you had this call for hot battery, uh, they would call you up. Uh, the battery commander would notify each of the platoon leaders. And then the platoon leaders would notify the squad leaders. And then the squad leaders would call everyone at home and tell them what the alert status was. And all personnel would have to report immediately to the assembly area. And hot battery is the highest alert, which means all the radar units and missile launch areas had to be activated right away. Now, we're gonna talk about the IFC, the Integrated Fire Control Area, where all the radar is. It's usually up, uh, located on a mountain way up way higher elevation, and usually down in the valley, maybe two, three months away, would be the launcher area. And in this case, uh, the IFC area, there's five radar units. You can see the arrows there pointing to those. And we're going to go over exactly how they all work in terms of um, uh, tracking all the targets. And here we go. If you start over on the... Uh, Left side, the large radar here, it's what they call a high par radar. It's a long range acquisition radar. In other words, it picks up far away a target, okay? 
And as the target gets closer, then it transferred to the LOPAR, which is the short range acquisition radar. And then when the SIL comes closer, a TRR or the target ranging radar catches it. And then the TTR or the target tracking radar picks it up. Then you're, you're set, you're, you're locked in, uh, we'll say on a Russian bomber. Then on the right, I put in blue, is the MTR, missile tracking radar. And that's used when they fire the uh, Nike Ajax out. Then that radar tracks them. And here's a uh, sketch that I put together to give you an idea. Um, if you start in the lower right, here's your high par radar, then it picks up the low par radar, then the target tracking radar, and then the target ranging radar. So you're locked in up there on the Soviet uh, fighter jet. Then they would launch the Nike missile. You can see that there on the left. And then that missile tracking radar would track the missile. And what would happen is the, uh, you would actually guide it so that the missile would actually actually hit the plane and take it out of the sky. Here's a great shot. The radar crew up in uh, Avon Simsbury. My father had a lot, of these, a lot of these pictures that I still have today. And he's standing there. He's on the top left, first one in, on the top left. And that's one of the crews that uh, he was in charge of at the Avon Simsbury Nike site. And that's one of the radars that we just, uh, we just discussed. Great shot here. They have uh, the radars, of course, is outside. And they have all these individual radar rooms, if you will. You go in there, and then they have all the uh, where you track everything. and. Uh, you test all the circuits. Uh, it, it's very, very uh, uh, technical to learn everything and that. And you can see they got the scopes there in the back. And this is my probably one of my favorite pictures. <laughs> There's my father sitting down there in the front. He's got the earphones on. And you can see in this picture, he was a Spec 4 technician, radar technician. You can see how small these individual uh, radar tracking stations are. And there's an interesting story. I just wanted to tell everybody about that. Uh, the National Guard took him over. And then he joined the National Guard. And of course, you start right, almost right at the bottom. You don't start at your rank you had when you were in World War II. So here he is, starting off, in this case, as a specialist fourth class. And I have a couple of. Uh, well, to give you some idea what's going on here. They had their first inspection up in uh, Avon Simsbury, okay? All 100 men, they're all lined up at attention. All lined up at attention. <laughs> My father loves to tell the story. And when you do that, by regulation, you're, you have your Class A uniforms on, and you're supposed to have all your military medals and everything else that you've learned on it. And of course, so the commanding general for the state of Connecticut came by, and he's going down one line, looking at everybody, make sure everything was all uh, in good shape. And he gets to the back line, and he gets to my father, and he stops. He doesn't say anything. He, he, he looks right at him, because my father had all his medals on, you know. And um, he says, after this, uh, I want to see you. And then he goes to the next fella. You know, of course, my father doesn't know what's going on here. What, uh, what could he possibly want to do with see me? So the, the formation broke away, and he called him over, and he says, let's go to lunch. <laughs> my, my father couldn't understand that. Now, you remember, my father had this. This was with the uh, <laughs> Spec 5. That's what he was as a technician, you know? And on his uniform, of course, he had all those World War II medals. <laughs> and he had twice as many medals as the general. I mean, he was in uh, six, <laughs> he had six battle stars over, because he was in uh, North Africa, Italy, Sicily, <laughs> uh, 
southern France, Germany, and Austria. So for three years of combat over there. And this was the rank that he had right here. It's the uh, first sergeant battalion. It's the highest rank they had. They didn't have a sergeant major at the time. What happened was the general said, this is ridiculous. You should not be, you're embarrassing yourself by standing there with this low rank on. So he promoted him all the way to uh, master sergeant, which is the same as this, but it doesn't have a diamond in the middle. That's the highest one <laughs> that they could have. So he, so he comes back up to the, <laughs> everybody's saying, oh my gosh, is he gonna come back? What's gonna go on? And he got a smile on his face, he said, and uh, everybody up there was happy for him. So that's, uh, that's a true story, how we got promoted. <laughs> and here's the Missile Control Board, unbelievable. Uh, I, I was lucky to get all these, of course, they're all discla cl not classified anymore. And I uh, put red squares around the important ones, you know, they're ready to fire and then launch. And then on the bottom, here's your fire lights and everything else. And for every, uh, every test on every missile, so that they were all okay, they had to uh, uh, go one at, a, one at a time on this missile control board. This is the great shot. Overhead shot of the missile area, which is now down in the valley, the radar is up on top of a mountain, probably a couple miles away. I put a red arrow in the middle, because if you notice, there's three different uh, platforms out there, and each one has a, uh, uh, a yellow uh, frame right there. Now what happens is each one of those platforms, um, the whole floor opens up and it goes down and all the missiles are stored on the ground. And then what happens, the missiles come up one at a time. So in this case, you'd probably have one in each of those three missiles. And then they have a, uh, a nice system here. The missiles are so engineered, amazing, that one person can actually push them. And they push the missiles up away from, it go, goes right off from this uh, yellow platform onto its launching pad. And then it'll go down the elevator and it send up another missile and just continue until they get all the missiles there. And you can see at the top there, you can see how the gate's protected. It's got a double, uh, double fence all the way around it. And uh, at night they put all the guard dogs in there roaming around so nobody can, uh, can get in there. It was all very top secret. The Nike Ajax missiles, here it is, launch area. In this, in this case, this is a large uh, um, Nike site. 24 missiles, they're all up and ready to launch, ready for the signal. And the control, of course, is on the radar units, which is on the top of a nearby mountain. Now, I want to go over these alerts, Nike site alerts. What are they? Well, when they call you up on the telephone, it's either white, blue, or red. White alert means it's a standby condition. Uh, you've got to report for duty at the Nike site, and it has, has to do with maintenance or testing or training, okay? Now, if they call up and they say it's a blue alert, they've got a target already incoming from, uh, from uh, say, a Russian uh, jet plane. So if it goes blue, then you know they have the destination of the target appears to be in the direction of the battery defense area. And then prepare for action goes off status and the operating personnel, they have, uh, they're all up in the site there. They have like an hour to get to the site, man their battle stations. And then the equipment in the launching area is energized. And if you go to red alert, which is a high alert, alert uh, that means there's an attack against the Nike site is imminent. And then everything goes and, and squared away here where the missile is launched at the designated target. And this is a Nike missile launcher area. Really, behind all the fence, all it is are these uh, simple buildings here where the barracks are and, and cooking and whatever. But then if you take a look on the picture over there on the right, you see this wide open, flat, concrete pad. And then, of course, on that pad there on the right, if you look down below, you say there's uh, all these metal grates there, if you will, which go down below for the missiles. And if you go on the right there, there's an empty elevator. And then in the middle, you can see the missiles one at a time are pushed on top of the elevator. And then we 
arrive over here on the left, and you can see there's the Nike Ajax coming up to ground level. That's how the system works. And there they are. They're all up in, uh, in this particular one section here. They're all up, all four of them, ready to fight if there is a uh, target. Now you're saying, how could they possibly train <laughs> in Connecticut or Massachusetts or wherever? You're not going to shoot these missiles up. So every, um, they had a rotating schedule. Every six months or, or year, they would send the whole crew, a whole crew from the site, down to Flor Fort Bliss, Texas, the U.S. Army Air Defense School. There's a picture there of the Nike Ajax at uh, Fort Bliss down in Texas. That's where they actually have uh, their range and they uh, do all their training. And they do their training, which is in actually right over the border in New Mexico, White Sands, New Mexico. Now here's a postcard my father actually sent me. Shows all the different missiles that they would fire there at targets. And of course, they're just interested in the uh, Nike Ajax. And there it is, the Nike Ajax, there's in position out on a white sand, because it's all desert, and it looks like it's all white sand. And that's where they have the missile range. And you're saying, what do they shoot at? Well, on the right shows the Ajax being launched. But on the left, I finally got a picture of what they call uh, jet-powered drones. All right? And they send these way up in the... Uh, atmosphere and they go at a high speed and the idea is that uh, the radar picks them up goes through the tracking sequence that we had there zeroes in on the uh, the drone then they're given the okay to fire off the missile it goes up in the air and the two radars lock in and he blows the drone right out of the sky and they did all this testing. They were down there probably six weeks anyway, every year. Now, times have changed. These missiles are becoming obsolete. And so they started uh, reconditioning some of these Nike Ajax sites to uh, the new Nike Hercule Hercules missile. And there it is on the right. Faster. Speed is Mach, almost Mach 4. Range 90 miles now. Flight ceiling 28 miles. Difference is, it can have a nuclear warhead. And there's a great picture down there of the missile. You can see the, uh, the drawing of it there, Nike Hercules, guidance unit, the warheads in the middle, rocket motor, and then the uh, booster, which separates. Now, I want to make a comparison here at that time around maybe 1960, 61, in that area. Cold War, what did the United States have for missiles? Okay, you know they still have some of the Nike Ajax, and you know they not this new missile, the Nike Hercules. And then we talked a little bit about uh, the Atlas intercontinental ballistic missiles, mostly in the Midwest. Let's compare them. For the speed, Ajax. Mach 2.2, Hercules 3.6, ICBM 10, 10 times the speed of sound. The range on Ajax 30 miles, Hercules 90 miles, so they triple the range. Uh, ICBMs 9,000 miles. Flight ceiling 13 miles for the Ajax, 28 miles for Hercules, 40 miles ICBM. Armament. Conventional Ajax, Hercules now has nuclear, and the ICBM also has nuclear. This is a great picture. It shows them transporting the new nuclear, Nike Hercules. They moved it to now the underground missile maintenance area. And here's now, this shows a launching pad with three different Nike Hercules on them overhead uh, shot here. Now you got to remember the reason they like the uh, nuclear is that with the Nike Ajax does not have nuclear and the only way you're going to knock a plane down or a jet down is if you hit it. So one rocket, one plane. 
And here, they have all the technology. If you fire this missile, and say the Soviet Union sets over, say, four bombers, what you do is you have the control so that you can detonate the nuclear explosion in the air in the middle of the formation and knock down all four with one missile. That's a great shot. Shows a Hercules missile elevated to the launch position. And there's a Nike missile battle, uh, battery. Two of the missiles are already up, and the others are ready to, uh, to go to the next position. Now, let's run through here how you would actually do this. So, let's say there's a Soviet Tu-95 bomber that leaves Moscow. Comes over the Atlantic Ocean. The acquisition radars pick up the targets. The high power on the right picks it up. Then it gets closer, the low power radar picks it up. Then all those in the, uh, up in the mountain and the different uh, radar control stations, which there's a, uh, actually a schematic of which one is, with all the controls on them. They start tracking this bomber. Then you go through your alerts. White, white be standby condition, maintenance, testing, or training. Blue, destination of target appears to be in direction of the battery. Prepare for action status. Operating personnel, man their batting sta battle station. Equipment and launching area energized. Red, attack against the Nike site imminent. Missile is launched. Now they have a recall plan which we went over. And I actually found this thing here. You gotta understand, 1961, there are no computers, <laughs> no cell phones. And I actually found the actual, uh, actual plan for calling it with everyone's name on it and it's got all the, uh, the Captain Kelly is in charge of this uh, Cromwell site now. They moved from uh, um, Avon, Simsbury to Cromwell. And it's page after page. And, and it's, it's amazing. They, they sort of listed them where the closest town here. And this one's pretty good. I got my father's name on it. And uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, right, right up right up on the top here, my father. And it's got all the other um, phone numbers to call. And they've all got to get there within 45 minutes. And I, I remember to this day, <laughs> my father had this list and he hid it um, underneath the stand where the telephone was. <laughs> and we were told never to touch it. <laughs> but that's how they did it. That's how they did it back in the day. And when you called hot battery, that's the, uh, then you know something was really on, the target's really there, and you've got you've to race, race as fast as you can to each one of these Nike sites. On some of the calls, I used to, um, like in the summer, I would drive, I had my license, I would drive my father to it, drop him over, he said, I can't come back for a couple weeks or something, then uh, go back. So I knew where all these, uh, all these sites were. <laughs> the next one here. Now here we go, the target. Target tracking radar picks it up, then the ranging radar picks it up, missile tracking radar picks it up. The bomber's coming right towards Connecticut. The doors are open, you can see down below. There's an actual uh, Nike Hercules. Now it's coming. The, rising up there at the ground level. Now it's at ground level. Then it's up there, you can see the tracks, two of them are already up there. Here's the track, once they get up there, they just slide, you actually just can push them by hand on the track. Ready to launch. 
Here come the bombers. Nike Hercules is launched. All the radars are locked in. It hits the target. There's an actual picture of uh, down in White Sands, New Mexico, hitting the uh, Soviet, well, actually a drone. So this is uh, part two of the uh, Nike bases in uh, Connecticut, where my father was. And of course, they're in Massachusetts and Rhode Island also. And uh, stay tuned for part three. This is Dave Norton. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm.